the Wireless Wise Guys podcast. Everything you wanted to know about cell tower leases but were afraid to ask. Powered by Tower Genius, the USA's premier cell tower lease experts. Hi, my name is Steve Cazell. I'm one of the managing partners here at Tower Genius LLC. We are the USA's premier cell site lease coaching consulting firm working exclusively for landlords for the past 14 plus years. Uh, my business partner, Kevin Donahue, and I have over 50 years combined experience working in the cell tower leasing industry. So I'd like to talk today, uh, this video is gonna be maybe a little bit longer than I usually do, but um, I know many of you probably wanted me to put on the, uh, the green cape, but um, I, I don't have it available to me today. So let's talk about um, one of the biggest questions that we, we get besides people trying to get a cell tower on their property, which again, if, if you're trying to do that, it's a very risky proposition. Um, there's a pretty low probability, maybe a one in a thousand chance that you can actually get one. Uh, if you are interested in doing that, please don't call me. Go to uh, www.getacelltower.com and there's uh, you opt in and there's some instructions there and uh, we charge a fee for it because we get about you know two three thousand people call us every year trying to get a cell tower so we have a sales funnel page for that get a cell tower.com and if you look at the odds it's probably about one in a thousand chance that you'll actually be successful um, there are about three hundred thirty thousand uh, cell sites in the united states and there are about 330 million people so do the math on that that's how many landlords there are but let's talk about why you came to this video which is how are cell tower and cell site lease rates determined or calculated? Uh, people always want to know, how do you figure out what the going rate of the cell tower lease agreement is? Well, I know some guy that's getting 5,000 or 10,000 a month. These guys only offer me 500. Well, how's it calculated? Um, are there comps? Well, the carriers and tower companies will tell you, oh yeah, there's comps. Here are 10 uh, property owners in your county that, uh, we, we signed a lease for $1,000 a month with, or 500. There are no comps in this industry, okay? That's, that's the, the first, the first um, bit of information. They're gonna give you the name, they're gonna cherry pick five or 10 uh, property owners and say, here, here, here are the five suckers that took 500 bucks a month. And that's unfortunately what happens all the time. I've seen it already several times here in 2022. Okay, are they calculated by a lease calculator? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a few people that are clever enough to do like, you know, the software, come up with a calculator or spreadsheet. Um, if it works for them, that's great. But we've been doing this for, for a long time and we've never used a calculator for any of it. Uh, so take your calculator and check it out the window. Uh, as far as uh, cell tower lease calculators are concerned, that's not how it works. How about by square footage or by the number of antennas? Uh, the answer is no to that. However, with the exception, you might find certain municipalities, government agencies where you have government employees and they, that's how they, they do it with their master lease agreements. It's not the, the, the way that the average Joe or Jane is gonna have them uh, be determined on their property. So yeah, there are a few exceptions. There are some electrical utility companies, water districts, county, state governments that will calculate you know, square footage or a number of antennas. The problem with the number of antennas and the square footage what if they take out the equipment cabinets? What if they reduce the size of the antennas? Okay, so you start out with 12 antennas, but hey, Mr. Landlord, we only need six now because of the technology advances. So give us a 50% rent reduction. Ain't gonna work. So uh, how are cell tower lease rates calculated? Okay, are, are the cell tower uh, values calculated by a site-by-site -site basis? Absolutely, yes. And we've been doing this, we've seen thousands and thousands of these and each and every one of the cell sites that we've consulted on for our clients have been determined. The values have been determined on a site-by-site -site basis because there is no cookie cutter solution. It's all what's at that particular location. So let's talk a little bit more about this. I know I'm blocking the whiteboard here, but cell towers and cell sites. So a cell tower, obviously, you know what a tower is. It's either a guide wire tower with, with anchors in the ground, a lattice tower with three feet, or a monopole. It's typically the types of cell towers that we see. It's either a cell tower or it's a cell site, antennas on a rooftop or other structure, okay? 
And when we are looking at um, determining the values, we need to ask, is it a new cell tower? Or is it an existing cell tower? Or is it a single carrier cell tower? Or is it a multi-carrier cell tower? All these factors uh, play into what the values are here. So when I look at a cell site, I ask myself, is it carrier owned? So is Verizon Wireless? Or is T-Mobile or AT&T or US Cellular the, the entity on that lease agreement? Who is proposing that cell site, um, that cell tower? Is it a carrier site or is it a developer site? Is it, is it you know, Bob's you know, Telecom out of Florida, uh, the tower developer, or is it like a vertical bridge or an American tower proposal? So if it's a carrier-owned um, carrier site, then you don't have a middleman. Then they're dealing directly with you. You're going to get a better price in most cases. If it's a developer-owned site or a tower-managed uh, site, well, then, then there, there is a tower company between you and the carrier okay so they're in the middle of that sandwich and they need their piece why because the tower company is footing the bill to develop that cell site they're going to pay about 200 to 250 thousand dollars in hard and soft costs to get that tower developed and then verizon at&t t-mobile dish us well not us cellular but the, the carriers will pay the tower company roughly about two thousand dollars a month give or take depending on where you're located where the site is so your expectation of getting $2,500 a month on a, on a carrier on site, well, that's, that's a possibility depending on where it's located and these other factors that influence it. But if it's a, um, if it's a tower company owned site, they're not gonna offer you 2,500 bucks a month. They might offer you 750 bucks a month. They might offer you a thousand bucks a month. I saw one yesterday here in Florida Guy called me, and uh, it was a major, one of the top four tower companies. They offered him $2,000 a month to start off. So I said, hmm, that doesn't make sense. So there has to be something else in play. There's either a, a multi-carrier, a multi-tenant tower nearby within a football field or two that uh, may have an issue. Maybe there's an eminent domain situation or something going on. And basically, they offered the uh, the property owner... 2000 month because something was going on most likely at the nearby tower that's what i believe was in play here or they wouldn't have offered 2000 a month because one carrier at 2000 a month for a tower company doesn't make financial sense so it's got to be a multi carrier play so um so it's either um carrier owned tower developer owned municipal government or private owner that's really the difference municipalities quasi government agencies water districts utility companies they're all going to charge a premium so a lot of those economics of the uh, of the uh, tower company having a tenant that pays two thousand a month uh, kind of go out the window if you're a municipality. You basically charge what whatever you want, <laughs> but uh, you do need expert guidance, and we have helped many municipalities and water districts and utility companies figure out pricing with the tower companies and carriers. Um, is it a new site, and is it being offered by a developer? Well. You know, you're probably never going to see more than a thousand bucks a month. Is it a new site and a carrier site? Well, depending on where you're located, you know, you might get a thousand bucks a month. You might get five thousand a month. So it really needs to uh, be determined on a site by site basis. And again, what are these influencing factors? Zoning. Is it a commercial, industrial, retail, agricultural district? Um, what other properties are available? So if there is a um, demand for coverage, the carrier is going to have a search ring. If there is a high supply, so if there are multiple properties where they could locate, you're not going to see as much money on the rent. If you're the only game in town, if you're an oasis in the middle of a desert, then you're going to see a, a premium uh, rental price. Location, again, uh, what's the proximity to the other sites? And, you know, what's the elevation? Is it is it bordered by wetlands? There is a lot of different factors that come into uh, influencing what the prices are. What's the visual impact of the site? If they tuck it behind the trees or if it's sitting right in front, chances are it's not going to be, if it's a, if it's an eyesore, it's not going to get approved in zoning. Uh, what other competing locations? Primarily loop rooftops. If you have, if you're in a city, let's say you're in San Francisco uh, on a, well, on a flat area, that's not really going to happen. Let's say you're in Los Angeles on a flat area and you have six or seven other competing rooftops all vying, you know, all being contacted by that same site acquisition rep chances are you're not going to see 2000 a month. You might see 1500 They're going to look for the lowest hanging fruit 
if it's if it, there's no difference in, in the coverage that the site provides. Um, and also the weakest link. Do you have a neighbor who's a cheapskate? Do you have a neighbor that's hard up for money? Do you have a neighbor that is desperate? Well, they're going to lowball that person all day long and they're going to play them against you. So when you look at the influencing factors, these site, there is no cookie cutter solution. You do need to look at the values on a site by site basis. High demand plus low supply equals better terms. It's basic economics. So the carriers have a demand for coverage. They have a need. If there's a low supply of competing properties or locations, you have a better chance of getting a great deal. So if you have questions about how cell tower lease values are determined, uh, it's, it's on a site by site basis. And if you have questions, give us a call at Tower Genius. Our number is 888-313-9750. We've been doing this for a long time. We're gonna answer any questions that you have. Uh, either myself, Steve Cazell, or my partner, Kevin Donahue, will talk to you and we will figure out a strategy. Book a 30 minute discovery call. You won't regret it. Okay, so as a follow up uh, to the, uh, the the video that I just shot here, uh, Steve again. So just wanna kind of run through a couple quick things here, which I don't think I touched upon during the video. So um, we're talking about uh, cell sites. They are not determined by comps. They're not determined by lease calculators or by square footage or by number of antennas with a few exceptions of municipalities and utility companies, water companies, things like that, uh, who some, some of them do calculate by square foot. Don't ask me why, that's how they do it, but uh, that's the exception, not, not the uh, exception to the rule. All cell tower leases are calculated on a site by site basis. So you really need to have somebody take a look at it. And the bottom line, it comes down to, you know, cell tower versus a cell site on an amendment, on an existing cell tower, okay, that is owned by a tower company. Most of them will be. Um, we have to ask, is it a single carrier site or is it a multi-carrier site? A multi-carrier tower company owned cell tower will generate more revenue because they've had, let's say, two or three tenants paying $2,000 plus per month for the last, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. And we look at that, we kind of figure out what that uh, tower may be generating. Um, we've seen sites that generate very little money. We've seen sites that generate a lot of money. And believe me, folks, the, the tower companies are not gonna disclose that. That is like their holy grail. They are not gonna tell you what they're making unless you wind up in a lawsuit with them and there's some discovery. Um, and we have seen that too. So we, we know what we're talking about. Um, and typically the Verizons of the world, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, uh, you know, they, they did pay um, $2,000 roughly a month, uh, escalating at three to 4% a year on most of these towers. So when you're looking to extend a lease with American Tower Corporation, Crown Castle, SBA, Vertical Bridge, one of these companies. Is it a single carrier site or is it a multi-carrier site? Because a single carrier site, it's not gonna have as much wiggle room as a multi-carrier site will. And that's really where we have to look at these factors again. Zoning, location, visual impact, competing sites, and your neighbors. How much is it gonna to cost to relocate that tower? If, if you play hardball with them, do they, have, do they have the budget to move the site? Is there any better location nearby? So these are all things, again, that we, we take a look at, these influencing factors. And, you know, the chances of relocation exist, but they're low. Uh, here's another big thing. Rooftop manager, tower, uh, tower company owned rooftop management contracts are, in my opinion, it's one of the biggest conflicts of interest that exist in the industry today. How can you have a company that is uh, that owns you know 30 40 thousand towers or you know thousands of sites and who is marketing to uh, companies like Verizon AT&T T-Mobile to attract them as tenants on new sites or to get uh, new build programs are they really going to be negotiating your best interest if they manage your rooftop. Like if you have a problem with Verizon, and uh, you know, or you want to, you want to get that that rent uh, increased. Why on earth would you put somebody between you and 
um, in the carrier that is a tower company that is in bed with them. It just doesn't make any sense. So if you have a rooftop, I would just suggest avoid these rooftop management uh, contracts with the tower companies. It's a conflict of interest and there's really no reason to do that. As far as um, with a single carrier, multi-carrier road site again, so uh, you won't see these multi-carrier sites likely with um, with the um, with the carriers. They'll be tower company owned. So if you have questions about these factors that influence uh, the values, give us a call at Tower Genius 888-313-8975 or go to towergenius.com and book a 30-minute discovery call with Kevin Donahue or, or myself, Steve Casella. Uh, we are uh, knowledgeable in this field. We're not attorneys. Uh, attorneys do hire us as, as uh, the subject matter experts uh, in this field. So give us a call, 888-313-9750, and we look forward to helping out and uh, speaking to you soon. Thanks. You've been listening to the Wireless Wise Guys podcast. 